We've heard a lot about Canterbury Commons. When we discovered the Keller family holotapes, we recall that the entire rescue party came from Canterbury Commons. And the Fauna 3 official strategy guide tells us that Moira Brown from Megaton originally came from Canterbury Commons. And every wandering trader we've met has talked about Canterbury Commons. But it's a comment from Three Dog about the place that piqued my curiosity. All right, Three Dog has heard about some crazy things going on out there in the Capital Wasteland, but this one just might beat them all. I've been getting some scattered reports that a couple of costume kooks have been battling for control of the settlement called Canterbury Commons. One of these wackos seems to be assisted by robots, and the other by mutated bugs. Every day it seems to be the same nutty scene, with the scuffles ending in a stalemate. So if your travels take you to Canterbury Commons, Keep your head down and your assault rifle loaded for crazy. Costumed kooks? What could that be all about? We find Canterbury Commons by following the road north from the Corvega factory. Eventually, we see a ruined town to the northeast. And right outside the town is a badly damaged cul-de-sac where the wandering merchant crow is peddling his goods. Hello. Searching for a friend out in the wastes? No one is more reliable than a cold, hard skin of steel. Hey, Crow, tell me about your trade caravan. My caravan sells clothing and armor to decorate and protect the body while it endures the ravages of the physical world. My travels take me from Canterbury Commons to where there is true need of this protection. After all, this is what they'll pay the most for. That sounds interesting. I'm here to buy. If the clothes make the man... Then here are the means to remake yourself. But Crow's inventory is not that interesting. He only has a couple hundred caps to barter with. He has combat armor and a combat helmet, useful at lower to mid levels. A radiation suit, which is pretty nice, but the most expensive apparel item he has is a set of Raider Blastmaster armor. Not exactly rare. Can you repair something for me, Crow? Yes, but only if it wants to be repaired. Oh, so armor is sentient and has desires? Okay, Crow. Tragically, his repair skill is only 15. When are we going to meet someone who has higher than 15 repair skill? I've got to go now, Crow. Walk well, friend. Crow was just leaving Canterbury Commons. But as we approach, we interrupt some sort of confrontation taking place in the streets. You'll never get away with terrorizing this town. Not while it's under the protection of the Mechanist. You and your pathetic tin cans are no match for my army. (laughs) The citizens of this town have nothing to fear. The Mechanist is here to protect them. Ha! We'll see about that. Attack my ant soldiers. Destroy this fool and his tin toys. Go forth, my steadfast creation. Show these vermin humanity's true power. Face it, Mechanist. Humans and their toys are done for. They killed themselves off with their petty wars. Humans may be weak sometimes, but our creations are strong and pure. Something you'll never be. Humanity's creations were the seeds of their undoing. And now, the world will belong to the antagonizer. Not while the world is protected by me, the Mechanist. Your reign of terror is at an end! Chasing after them, we have to choose Mechanist or Antagonizer, but then... Are you alright? You aren't hurt, are you? I'd like to apologize for the rude welcome. Those two have been a bit of a... problem lately. Name's Ro. Uncle Ro to most. Welcome to Canterbury Commons. For what that's worth. What was that all about? Who were those people? The, um, Mechanist and the Antagonizer. That's just what they call themselves. It's ridiculous, I know. You seem to be pretty calm, considering there was just war in your streets. That must be the 20th time I've seen those two go at it. There are problem citizens, the Mechanist and the Ant Agonizer. A while ago, we were attacked by the Ant Agonizer. That woman with the ants, obviously. The Mechanist saved the town with his robots. That was all well and good, but I swear their fights are getting bigger and it's been driving off the merchants. They simply won't leave. 
I'm just passing through. Don't bug me with your problems. Please, we really do need someone to stop the Mechanist and the Antagonizer. We can pay. They've been using this town as their battlefield, and now some of the merchants are avoiding us. If something isn't done, the town will be ruined. Well, I don't care. I'm just interested in finding supplies. Well, I suppose that's something. Canterbury Commons is known for its trading supplies, for now at least. Enjoy your stay, but if you find yourself low on caps, my offer still stands. How much would a solution be worth to you? Two hundred caps if you can find where the Ant Agonizer and the Mechanist hide and convince them to stop their rivalry or otherwise stop fighting. You only need to stop one of them, really. Nowadays, I think they only stay in Canterbury to fight each other. So what do you say? We can pass a speech check to say double that and you've got yourself a deal. Hmm, you drive a hard bargain, friend. But seeing how we haven't been able to solve the problem ourselves, fine. You've got a deal, but I expect results. Oh, and please do try to use some discretion. We already have plenty of would-be heroes starting wars in our streets. We don't need another. And with that, we start the superhuman gambit. But to find these goons, we have to ask around town to see if the townsfolk can give us any clues. We'll start with Uncle Ro here. Can I ask you more about the antagonizer and the mechanist? If it'll help, I'm glad to. What can you tell me about the antagonizer? And one day there was a crazy woman leading a bunch of ants into town. She said humanity was dead and the ants would inherit the earth, stuff like that. Well, that gave Dom plenty of time to line up a shot or two on the ants. She ran away, but every once in a while she'd stage an attack again. She wasn't much of a threat then. In fact, she was sort of entertaining at first. Gave everyone in town something to talk about. But when the mechanists started fighting her, things got bad. Ants are easy to shoot, but add robots with lasers, and it got real nasty. What can you tell me about the Mechanist? The Mechanist used to be our town mechanic, Scott Walensky. Quiet guy, but plenty fierce with a wrench and some solder. Guy used to take care of a robot that protected the town, until it got torn up in one of the Ant Agonizer's lame little attacks. I guess he took it personal, because he made a mechanical suit and called himself the Mechanist, said he would lead a robot army to fight her. Now he doesn't even respond to his name, and his robot army is more dangerous to the town than the ants ever were. Do you know anything else that could help me stop him? My nephew Derek might know more about them. I swear it's all I can do to keep him from running into the fight whenever they come out. He might know more about where you can find them, but don't encourage the poor boy. He's had enough close calls. Well, looks like we'll have to track down Derek. All right, Ro, that's enough about them. I most heartily agree. Can I get some directions around town? All right, you're the boss. I am? Okay. Where can I get some food? You'll want to talk with Joe Porter over in Dot's Diner. I don't know who Dot was, but I'm sure Porter's food does her memory proud. Where did the caravan set up? When they're in town, you can find the caravan trader out front of the town. They say it's a good way to catch a visitor's eye. Well, I think it's working. Crow's caravan is the first thing we found upon coming into town. Glad to help, glad to help. Is there anything to trade around here? You can usually find one of the trade caravans at the entrance to town. They come through every day or two. Other than them, Porter's always got food for sale down at the diner. Okay, so caravans and Porter, that's about all they have in town. Can you repair something for me? We used to have a better mechanic, but that didn't work out so well. I'll see what I can do. And Ro has a repair skill of 17. Not much better than Crow. Frustrating. All right, I've got to go now. Good luck with those two troublemakers. Turning around, we see that the Mechanist and the Antagonizer have both escaped. Ro took us aside before we could follow them. Now we don't know where they went. Heading into town to search for some clues, we see some sort of ruined mayoral building to the right and Dot's Diner to the left. Here, Hi. we find Derek. Oh man, did you see it? Did you see it? The Antagonizer was all like, fear me. But the Mechanist was all, stop, evildoer. Yeah, I saw it. What can you tell me about them? The Antagonizer, she's this evil supervillain who's trying to wipe out humans with her ants. And the Mechanist protects us with his robots. And when they fight in town, it's incredible! There's all these lasers and biting and blood and it's crazy! This is serious business, kid. You could get hurt. What do you know about them? You sound like Uncle Ro. He never lets me watch when they fight. They're just about the only exciting thing that ever happens in this town. Are those jokers for real? What's up with their silly costumes? No way! They're awesome and their suits are really cool too. 
the antagonizer's got this army of ants, and the mechanist has an army of robots, and then they fight. But my uncle never lets me watch them. He says it's dangerous. This is serious business, Derek. <laughs> You're insane, kid. Oh yeah, well, 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 so is your face. Those guys must really liven up the place, huh? Anyone ever get hurt? You think they're neat too, huh? It's not like they ever hurt anyone. Well, not like really badly hurt or anything. Dom and Machete make sure that everyone gets inside when they fight like that. Though, sometimes I sneak out to watch. The traitors and the slavers and the raiders, they don't like the antagonizer or the mechanist. They say they're bad for business. But that's dumb. The ants and the robots rip them to shreds. That shows them. Life around here is pretty hard, huh? Yeah, I guess. There's no one to play with. Everyone is so serious. It really kind of sucks. But the antagonizer's strong and forceful, and the mechanist, he's smart and good. They make things fun. Well, exciting anyway. I bet it's awesome to be them. Maybe they'll let me be their sidekick. What do you know about the antagonizer and the mechanist? You mean the superheroes? Yeah, I'll try to watch all of their fights. We can pass a child at heart check to ask, what are their superpowers? Do they have any weaknesses? That's easy. The antagonizer's suit makes her super agile, but I guess her ants are pretty weak on their own. Just watch out for her royal guard. The mechanist robots are a lot tougher, and his suit makes him super smart. I don't think he has any weaknesses. Well, maybe one. Since he's a good guy, he's not as ruthless as the antagonizer. Like, he'd never hurt an innocent like me, if you could help it. That dialogue option gives us a clue as to what stat bonus each of their respective suits can give the Lone Wanderer, in case we're planning to resolve this problem based on the rewards. Well, Derek, what can you tell me about the antagonizer? I don't know much about her, except she really, really doesn't like people. That's kind of cool. I mean, sometimes people are jerks. I think her lair is somewhere in the caves to the north of the city. I've seen her ants down there once in a while. Joe Porter said he found out something about her but my uncle won't let him tell me. He says, don't encourage the poor boy. All right, we'll have to find Joe Porter, but what can you tell me about the Mechanist? I knew the Mechanist back when he was just a normal hero. He used to be called Scott. Then he fixed up stuff around town. But one day, the antagonizer killed his favorite robot, and I told him he ought to fight back against her like a real superhero. Ever since then, he's been up on his forge and the back of the robot shop on the hill working to protect us all from the antagonizer. Oh great, so it's Derek's fault we're in this mess to begin with? He told Scott to dress up like the Mechanist? Nice work, Derek. Well, do you know anything else that could help me stop them? No way! Don't stop them, they're awesome! Unless, maybe you're going to be a superhero too. You could be called Super Humongous and fight them with an army of super mutants! And here, Derek gives the Lone Wanderer a superhero name, based on his or her special stats. He can call the Lone Wanderer Super Humongous, Awesome Claw, The Brilliant Shadow, Incredibly Lucky Guy. But if all of our special stats are pretty average, instead he says that we wouldn't make a very good superhero. Incidentally, Derek here is not only responsible for turning Scott into the Mechanist, but he's also responsible for inspiring Isabel Cruz to become the Mechanist in the Automatron DLC of Fallout. 4. She was inspired to become the Mechanist when she found a picture of the Mechanist's costume. We find this very picture in her lair. We learn from Isabel that she got this picture from a traveling caravan that had come from the Capital Wasteland, and the picture is signed DP, Derek Passion. <laughs> so this kid has inspired both Mechanists and is partially responsible for all of the carnage that they have caused. Well, Derek, that's enough about them. Well, okay. Can I get some directions around town? Uncle Roe and I live in the Old Town Hall, and Mr. Porter runs the diner across the street. It's not really a big place, you know? What can you tell me about Canterbury Commons? It's okay, I guess. I heard it's safer than most places, because the raiders don't bother us. But I've never been anywhere else, so I don't know. All right, I have to go now. Say hi to the mechanist for me. Standing nearby is Joe Porter. This is the guy that Derek told us might have some useful information about the antagonist. He's the barkeep, and we typically find him inside Dot's Diner. Just stumbled into town? He sure picked a fine day for it, with the crazies out there. Here, 
Have a drink on the house. Welcome to Canterbury. I'm Joe Porter. I make sure folks around here can get a meal when they need it. And with that, he gives us a bottle of dirty water. We can be really coarse and say, unpurified water? I'm insulted. Sorry, but our water purifier has been on back order for about 200 years. Unless you're here to make the delivery, I suggest you be glad for what you've got. Or we can say, that's pretty trusting of you. How do you know I'm not here to cause trouble? First clue was that you didn't shoot me. Most troublemakers I meet are just starving folks down in their luck. So stop the starve, stop the trouble. I can save a whole lot of trouble that way. Plus, if you're still planning on raising hell, losing out on a drink is the last of my worries. Or we can say thanks, Joe. Looks like a pretty nice place here. We do our best. Well, Dom and Roe do their best. I just make sure they've got enough food so they can keep on doing their best. You ever find yourself starving around here, drop by Dot's Diner. We don't charge much, but don't expect any more freebies. Do you know anything about the antagonizer or the mechanist? You mean apart from having cheesy names? Actually, I think I might know something useful. One of the traders told me she sounded like a girl he used to know. Girl's whole family was wiped out by ants. Not long before she showed up here. But they never found any trace of her body. Said her name was Tanya Kristoff. That might just be our little antagonizer. Can I get some directions around town? Sure thing. Where are you headed? Where can I get some food? You certainly came to the right person. What do you like? Joe has almost double the caps to barter with as Crow, but his selection is not very interesting. He's got Nuka-Cola, boxed foods. Really, the only thing valuable he sells is refined punga fruit from the Point Lookout DLC. Hey, Joe, can you tell me where the caravan's set up? They usually sell their stuff out front of the town. Never seem to stick around for long, though. I swear, those boys can't tolerate staying in one place for too long. What can you tell me about Canterbury Commons? Best place I ever worked in, and I guess I've worked about everywhere there is. We get some weird types passing through, but it's stable enough for a guy to make an honest living. I don't really see what more a man could ask for. All right, see you later, Joe. Bye. Sitting at the nearby bar, eating something horrid on a stick, is Machete. What do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? Watch your attitude. It'll get you into trouble. Yeah, maybe. But you need one to keep some of those caravanners in line. And to keep them from getting too friendly if you catch my drift. Even in a nice place like this, a girl's best friend is a good knife, right? I'm new in town. What is this place? This is Canterbury Commons, where dirty old lechers get rid of everything they picked up on the road. Unless it's not treatable, that is. And I'm Machete. Dom and me make sure nobody starts anything stupid in town. Keep that in mind, okay? Well, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to say hi. Fine. Hi. Whatever. I'm Machete, and I've got better things to do than talk with you. Scram. Do you know anything about the antagonizer or the mechanist? I know Dom doesn't want me just killing them. He and the mechanist used to be friends or something. All I know is, next time they come to town, I bet I could solve the whole problem with one bullet for each of them. Dom is short for Dominic. We'll meet him in just a bit. Can I get some directions around town? Busy. Go ask someone else. Oh, what a charmer. Now, if we've been to Little Lamplight, we can pass a perception check to say, did you get your name in Little Lamplight? Good guess. I was the toughest defender they ever saw in Lamplight. I earned my nickname fighting off a mole rat with a knife as big as my arm. When I left, I figured I'd pass on a cushy place like Big Town. I ended up here. Dom took me on as a guard. And that's that. Now that story she just told us is not exactly the truth. We learn from the Fallout 3 official strategy guide that when she turned 16, she got kicked out of Little Lamplight like all the other children. But while she was on her way to Big Town, she got disoriented in a dust storm. She got lost and never made it to Big Town, which is why she still describes it as a cushy place. But we know from my videos on Big Town that the opposite is actually true. It was a hard place to live. She eventually wandered into Canterbury Commons. This was three years ago. She's now 19 years old. We learn from the guide and from random conversations we can observe that she has a bit of a crush on Derek. 
That may seem really weird, because Derek looks really young, but in the lore of the game, he's 15, which makes them only four years apart. We learn from the guide and random conversations that Derek also has a bit of a crush on Machete, so perhaps in a few years when he gets older, they can make each other happy. Well, Machete, what can you tell me about Canterbury Commons? This whole place would fall apart if it weren't for Dom and me keeping anyone from causing too much trouble. Fat old Roe may think he runs the place, but it's only because Dom lets the idiot. Goodness, she doesn't have anything nice to say about Roe. That may just be because she's biased towards Dom. When Machete arrived here in town, Dom, the chief security guy here in town, took her under his wing and trained her to be a guard. He treats her like a daughter and has mentored her for the past three years. Nearby, we find a nameless wasteland doctor. He does provide medical services and has a small inventory of medical gear, but he doesn't have much of a story. Well, Heading outside, we can see the pre-war Dots Diner sign on display, and then we can cross the street to the south to enter Uncle Rose's house. We arrive at the bottom of a stairwell. Both the doors to the left and the right are caved in. Heading upstairs, we find a bathroom to the right, but there's nothing in here. All the stalls are empty. So heading out and moving north, we can go either east or west down a hallway. Going west first, we find a door to the south. This is a bit of a supply closet. Here we find some ammunition crates. Nothing in here is set to own, so we can loot as much as we want. Heading out and moving west, we see that the westward way is blocked in. So turning around and moving east, we enter the living and sleeping quarters of Derek and Uncle Ro. Everything in here, however, is set to own, so we can't take any without losing karma. We find some ammunition in a big armoire, and then we find a bunch of locked containers that require a key. Doc Hoff's inventory, Crow's inventory, Crazy Wolfgang's inventory, and Lucky Harith's inventory. These are the names of the four wandering merchants we can find in the wasteland. We can't pickpocket the keys off of them. They only drop keys once they're dead. It looks like this is a way to loot their entire store inventory if we choose to kill them, or if they get killed by wasteland creatures. But why are the contents of their shop inventory here in Rose room? Well, perhaps we should talk with them again to find out. Heading back downstairs, we can return to the street, and this time move east to explore the rest of the town's ruins. Unlike many of the ruined towns of the Wasteland, the rubble doesn't block Canterbury Commons off as a secluded zone. We can wander all over the huge chunks of concrete and rebar. But there's not a whole lot here. If we explore the northern end of the town, we do find a bit of a Brahmin pen, and Derek likes to come out here to say hi to the Brahmin. Hi. And south of the Brahmin pen, we find a door to Dominic and Machete's house. This can also be accessed via a garage door from the street side of the town. We arrive in a bit of a locker room. There's some food in a refrigerator. The lockers, however, are empty. There's a door to the south and an opening to the west. We'll start by opening the door to the south, and this leads to Dominique and Machete's living quarters. They each have their own bed, and we see quite a selection of melee weapons laid out on the shelves. To the west, we see a bit of a workshop. We even find a workbench here with a bottle cap mine underneath. And we can loot the nearby gun cabinets freely, where we find a Chinese pistol, a hunting rifle, and various ammunition. Opening the door to the restroom, we again find this thing empty. So to continue exploring, we turn around, go back to the north, and then turn west. Here, we find two shelves with more melee weapons, knives in particular, Machete must really love her blades, a couple of ammo boxes, and a unique weapon called the Highwayman's Friend. The Highwayman's Friend is the best tire iron in the game. Before special stats and perks are factored into the calculation, it has a base damage of 10 compared to a tire iron 6, critical damage of 10 compared to the tire iron 6, bringing its DPS up to 23.1 compared to 13.8, and damage per action point up to 0.7 compared to 0.4. However, it does way more, 5 pounds compared to a tire iron's 3. It's not exactly an impressive weapon, but it's a great little find for younger characters, especially due to how easy it is to get. It's not set to owned, we can take it without stealing, and all we have to do is walk in and grab it off a shelf. Perhaps Dominique and Machete confiscated this from a raider who tried to attack the town. 
On a desktop in this room to the southwest, we find a copy of Dean's Electronics, a bunch of whiskey in a nearby wooden crate, and then a small amount of caps and ammunition from the other containers in this room. Heading back out to Main Street, we finally find Dominic patrolling the town. I got my eye on you. Newcomer to town, huh? Well, I'm Dominic D'Alessandro, and welcome to Canterbury Commons. Try to ignore the idiots in the costumes. Popular activities around town are trading, listening to row yap, and burying thieves in unmarked graves. Of course, we ran out of thieves to bury long ago. Saw to it myself. Might be a dead art, unless you're planning on stealing anything. Maybe I can introduce a new pastime, shooting nosy guards in the face. Sure, you do that. We can take turns shooting each other. Teams are the whole damned town versus your face. Our team's got a winning record. Now, if we're done with this little pissing contest, I've got to get back to work. But I can tell we're just going to be best friends forever. Do you personally threat every visitor to your town? When I can find time for it, sure. In the guarding business, it's the personal touches that make all the difference. Anyway, welcome to town. Don't cause trouble. Threats of violent justice, so on, so forth. You look like you know the drill. No worries, Dominic. I wasn't planning on stealing anything. Sounds like a good plan. Keeps the traders happy that way. And it means Machete and I get to save on ammo. What do you know about the antagonizer and the mechanist? Bro hired you to put a stop to their shit, did he? Guess he finally listened when I told him I haven't got the time to do it myself. It's easy enough to hide inside when those two square off, but they're only getting worse about it all. Tell me about the antagonizer. I don't know who she is other than a crazy with an ant suit and a chip on her shoulder for humanity. She wasn't much trouble by herself, really. Her attacks were a joke, but at least stories of her kept some of the raiders at bay. If it helps, she was always attacking from the Warrens up north. Maybe you can find her ant nest in there. All right, what can you tell me about the Mechanist? You mean Scott Walensky? I refuse to call him by that ridiculous name just because his head got a screw loose. He used to be a damn good friend, and not just because he fixed my guns up. Now he spends all his time up in that bot shop just thinking about fighting that ant agonizer. Hardly even recognizes his own name anymore. Do you know anything else that could help me stop him? If you could just make either one of them stop fighting, it'd do the trick. You probably wouldn't have to worry about the other one. I can't imagine Scott attacking the town with his robots, and that ant agonizer girl was never much more than a sideshow freak by herself. Ro may prefer that you're thorough, but all I care about is that you get the job done, one way or the other. Can I get some directions around town? No problem. What are you looking for? Where can I get some food? Go talk with Porter, over in the diner. He'll set you right for food. Where do the caravans set up? You can find them out front. If you didn't see them coming in, that probably means they're all out on trips. If you're not in a hurry, you can wait a day or two. They'll be back around in time. What can you tell me about Canterbury Commons? Canterbury's a good town. Rose done a damned good job setting up the place, and no one can handle the day-to-day -day details like him. But when it comes to the big stuff, that's when he needs a little help. That's where I come in. What do you mean, the big stuff? Life and death matters. Putting down thieves. Protecting people from raiders who are short-sighted or stupid enough to attack, that sort of thing. Pretty much. Anything the man can't solve by talking at it. And don't misunderstand. He can solve a lot of things that way. So Dominic here is much more gracious towards Ro than Machete is. Perhaps Machete is still a bit too young to really appreciate Uncle Ro's leadership skills. How did you get this position, Dominic? I'm about the rarest thing out here in the Wastes. A mercenary who lived long enough to retire. I used to sell my services around here, so it was a natural place to settle down. Not a bad sort of retirement, honestly. Okay, that's enough. If you're done asking questions, I'm sure there's something I should be keeping an eye on. I'll be going. I'll be watching you. <laughs>
Anyway, that about does it for Canterbury Commons. Though the locked containers in Uncle Roe's place have got me curious. Tracking down Uncle Roe, we can ask him about them. With all of that fighting, I never did get to give you the official welcome to the town, did I? Welcome to Canterbury Commons, home of traders, caravanners, and most of all, of excellent bargains. Here for business or pleasure? I'm all business. What types have you got to offer? Damn near all of them, depending on which caravans in town. Guns, armor, food, junk. Pretty much everyone swings by the old circle eventually. Everyone but slavers, that is. It's a hassle to transport their wares, as they say. Just as well, eh? Anything else I can do to welcome you to town? Pleasure to come here, Uncle Ro. What's on tap? Most of the caravans that come through, their fondest desire is to spend a few days off the road and to get a full stomach. We've got good food in the diner and we try to keep it nice and peaceful here, when that's an option, of course. I'm here for neither. I'm just wandering through, Ro. In that case, I'm sure you'll find it was Providence that brought you here. Why, have a talk with any trader in town and I'm sure you'll find just the thing you didn't even realize you needed. Hey, what can you tell me about Canterbury Commons? Ha! Damn near everything, I suspect. I found it the place myself, and I'm the reason this place stays fat and happy. Why do the traders come here? Because I asked them to, I suspect. I grew up in these trade caravans, known most of them my whole life. I founded this place with my sister Daisy back in the day. Perfect stop along the caravan circuit. I see. So Uncle Roe asked each of the caravanners to come here. He mentioned his sister Daisy. Daisy was Derek's mother. Daisy was killed during a raider attack in 2271, and her husband, Derek's father, was killed just a few years later in another raider attack in 2274, making Derek, at the time of their deaths, 9 and 12 respectively. Perhaps the murder of his parents is why young Derek is so fascinated by a superhero like the Mechanist who can right the wrongs of the Wasteland. At any rate, Uncle Roe, you were telling us about the traders. How do these traders get organized? They're just small caravans that make rounds through the wastes, hawking their wares from Paradise Falls to Rivet City. They won't trade with anyone who's hit their friends, but that's about as organized as they get. Have you thought about organizing the traders into a unified group? I had thought about it, but some of these wasteland traders, well, they aren't exactly the organizational type. It'd take a pretty savvy businessman to make it worth their while to work together. Frankly, I'm not sure even I'm up to the task. I suppose you're right. Best to let them stay independent. I agree wholeheartedly. I'd hate to unduly burden a dedicated entrepreneur. At this point, we can pass a Master Trader or Black Widow perk check, pay 250 bottle caps, or pass a High Barter skill check to say, you know, if the traders worked together, that would allow them to have specialized sales for more reliable profits. Hmm, I think you're right. And the specialization might play to their eccentricities. It could work. And I could act as their representative in this matter. Goodness knows I've known them for years, so I should be able to speak for them. Just let me know what you suggest in the way of specialties, and I'll let them know to focus on that area. With that, we begin the unmarked quest, Merchant Empire. Uncle Ro gives us three notes, Merchant Contract, Caravan Trade Route, and Caravan Merchants. The Merchant Contract is apparently the contract we are about to sign with Uncle Ro as the manager of the Traveling Merchant Caravans. I, Oxhorn, heretofore recognized as the investor, do agree to the following. After negotiation with Ernest Uncle Roe of Canterbury Commons, an alliance has been struck with the caravan merchants of the Capital Wasteland. As their manager, Roe will oversee their inventories and investments. The investor may dictate each merchant's specialties and invest in their wares for improved quality goods. This contract is legally binding in so much as it can be enforced by a hired mercenary with guns and no sense of humor. Signed, Oxhorn. Contrary to what this contract says, we never find an option to dictate what types of items each of the merchants can sell. Each of the merchants will only specialize in one thing, however we can invest in them to improve their selection. And this helps explain why Uncle Roe had containers filled with the inventories of all of the wandering merchants in his house. He's their manager. The next item he gave us is a hand-drawn map of the caravan trade route. This is the loop that all four of the traveling merchant caravans follow, handy for tracking them down. 
Starting at Canterbury Commons, where we are now, the furthest most northeastern X on this map, we can follow the path of the merchant caravans in a clockwise rotation. They then travel south to Rivet City, then northwest to Megaton, due west to Evergreen Mills, northeast to Arafu, north and slightly east to Paradise Falls, then southeast to Agatha's house. We recall when I did my video on Agatha that the merchants like listening to her violin radio station, and she frequently mentions all of them during her radio broadcasts. Then they head northeast to Temple of the Union before completing the loop by ending again at Canterbury Commons. And in the final note, Caravan Merchants, Crow. This is the guy we met at the beginning of the video, a well-suited servant of the spirits. Does that mean that he's a spiritual man? He sells armor and apparel to protect against the dangers of this world and beyond. I see. He is a spiritual man. Then there's Lucky Harith, master of the manifold paths of survival, weaponry of all flavors for combatants of any age. Then Doc Hoff, doctor of excessively applied biochemistry, meds, chems, and food at reasonable prices for the discriminating customer. And finally, Crazy Wolfgang, junk master extraordinaire, the right junk for the right job every time. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, Ro, let's talk about weapons. Then you'd be looking for Lucky Harith, adventurer, martial artist, and occasional collector of the most deadly items known to mankind. He's a bit of an eccentric, but he deals in more weaponry than you can shake a sharp stick at. In fact, he's probably got a sharp stick, too. I like weapons and ammo. I think he should expand his inventory. Harith's got quite a lot of weapons, but I'm sure he could improve his stock. An investment of 200 caps should see to that nicely. That's a good investment. Here's 200 caps. Excellent. Harith will be delighted. He usually is by most things, really. Yeah, no. I think he should expand his inventory further. If Harith were a less reputable man, I'm sure he could use his armory to collect even more weapons. But he's a merchant, not a raider. So it's legitimate means only. Like a legitimate investment of 500 caps? Sounds good. Here's 500 caps. An investment in weaponry is usually returned in short order, after all. I'll inform Harith. And that's it. We can only invest in him twice. If we ask to invest a third time... That simply isn't feasible, I'm afraid. Harith's gear already rivals some mercenary armies. Anything further would be asking for trouble. All right, enough about that. Sure thing. Interested in any of the other traders? Yeah, let's talk about armor. Our man Crow handles most armor and clothing out on the trail. He grew up a tribal, but he traded in his loincloth for much snappier apparel long ago. We can again pay 200 caps to expand his inventory. It takes a fair amount of capital to expand into higher quality material, you know. Improving Crow's wardrobe would require a one-time investment of, say, 200 caps? Sounds good. Excellent. I'll send word to Crow right away. And 500 to expand it further. Crow's armor is already rather extensive, but I'm sure it could be even more impressive for a one-time investment of 500 caps. Sounds great. Isn't it, though? I'll send this right along to Crow. But again, two is his limit. At this point, the merchandise of our man Crow is the best in the wasteland. I fear it's beyond improvement with further investments. Let's talk about food and chems. Ah, then you'll be wanting Doc Hoff, or the good doctor, as he prefers. He prescribes everything from a good meal to stim packs to things that'll make your brain get up and dance. And like the last two, we can expand his inventory with 200 caps. The good doctor's lab equipment isn't cheap. It'll cost about 200 caps for him to offer higher quality material. Let's do it. Excellent. I'll send word to the good doctor right away. And further with 500. At this point, it would be hard to improve Doc's medicine cabinet without a significant investment. Say 500 caps should suffice for him to offer a whole cornucopia of pharmacopia. That's a good investment. Isn't it, though? I'll send this right along to him. But two is the limit. As much as it hurts me to say it, there's really only so much that money can buy. The good doctor's supply cannot be improved at this point. And finally, we can say, do you have any traders that deal with the miscellaneous? That'd be Crazy Wolfgang. He does repairs and general supplies, but he prefers to call himself a junk dealer. 
as he says he's overjoyed to assist those who have a deep need for his <laughs> junk. He's just like that. Says it catches people's attention. Oh, crazy Wolfgang. Well, like the others, we can invest 200 caps. With an investment of about 200 caps, I'm sure he could improve the quality of his materials, or at least offer more of them. Sounds good. Excellent. I'll see to it right away. And then 500 more. At this point, it would require another pack Brahmin to carry his wares. But for 500 caps, I think he could offer more. I like it. Isn't it, though? I'll inform Wolfgang immediately. But he, too, has a limit of two. At the moment, Wolfgang's practically carrying an entire junkyard with him. Anything more, and he'll have trouble with the traveling part of being a traveling salesman. Well, we just had an expensive conversation, but now we can try to track down these traders to see what we've just bought. We'll start by tracking down Crow, since we already met with him earlier in this episode, and we can use the map that Ro gave us to do so. After fully investing in him, when we next track him down... And here you are. The spirits have blessed me with many gifts, but you have given the more marketable gift of monetary investment. Please accept this offering. A mask and helmet made from the hide of the wisest spirits of the wind. May it benefit you as fully as it has myself. He gives us Crow's Eyebot Helmet. Crow's Eyebot Helmet, when fully repaired, has a DR of 5, which is pretty decent. It's half that of a T-51B Power Armor Helmet, but it also grants the wearer one perception. However, it doesn't last very long with only 25 item HP. One quarter that of a T-51B power armor helmet. The real drawback to this sucker is that it weighs 10 pounds, making it the heaviest helmet in the entire game. The T-51B power armor helmet, for example, only weighs 4 pounds. Yikes, that's a heavy iBot helmet. But it's an attractive little thing. Because it has slots in the face, you can see your character. And we can wear glasses or goggles or masks along with it, which not only allows us to stack their bonuses with this thing, but we can actually see our character wearing these things through the helmet. Crow has painted flames on the top of the helmet, or are those like flaming phoenix wings or something? At any rate, it's a distinct and unique version of the iBot helmet. Pretty cool. After investing in Crow, we see that he now has over a thousand caps to barter with, and that alone really makes this investment worthwhile. We can finally sell all of that excess ammunition for guns we never use, and make a pretty penny. But in addition to that, his inventory has greatly expanded. He has everything he had last time, the combat armor, but now he has many more suits, a wider selection of everyday clothes, and he can even sell a full suit of T-45D power armor. And he also sells the advanced radiation suit. His repair skill has dramatically improved. It was once 15, and after investment, it's now 65, making it one of the highest in the game. Thanks, Crow. Stay safe on the path you travel. Next, we'll try to track down Crazy Wolfgang. I hear you're the one who's so deeply invested in my junk. Not as deeply as me, of course, but who is, really. I picked up some stealth boys the other day, and they seemed like just the way to thank you for your investment. Kudos. Should we be surprised that a guy who's so deeply interested in his own junk gave us stealth boys that make the user invisible? <sighs> Something weird about that. Tell me about your caravan, Crazy Wolfgang. I scour the wasteland for the very best pieces of trash, the height of detritus, and the veritable pick of the litter. It's all valuable to someone. And I always make sure to make my rounds through Canterbury Commons. Their mayor, Roe, always has a place for a clever junk man like myself. I'm here to buy. Nothing but the highest quality leftovers, junk, and crap. Before investing in him, he has just over 500 caps to barter with, and his inventory is pretty unimpressive. The best thing we find on it is the schematics for the rocket launcher, but we likely already have this, as Moira had it on her inventory. And his junk selection is pretty small, he only has a handful of items and a few stim packs. But after investing, Wolfgang has over 2,000 caps to barter with, and a greatly expanded selection of junk. Can you repair something for me, Wolfgang? Whatever you've got, I've got just the thing to fix it. 
Before investing, he only has a 15 repair skill, but after investing, it leaps up to 75. Again, one of the highest in the wasteland. Thanks, Wolfgang. See you out on the road, huh? Next, we'll try to track down the weapon merchant, Lucky Harith. I hear you're my mysterious investor. With your help, I've collected quite a few toys for myself. But what good are toys if they aren't played with? Thanks to you, I have so many, I can hardly play with them all. So, I present to you a prize of the collection. A micro nuke. Enjoy it in safety. And he gives us a mini nuke. Strange that he called it a micro nuke. Tell me about your trade caravan, Lucky. See, the world's a dangerous and unbalanced place. So I realized the only way to bring peace was to make sure that everyone could be dangerous. So, with a little bit of help from the mayor of Canterbury Commons, I set up this caravan. I can't give the weapons away for free, but I come close. Let's see what you got. Please, enjoy my selection of high-quality problem solvers. Before we invest, he only has around 400 caps to barter with, and his weapon selection is meager. Really low-level stuff. The most advanced item he has is a laser pistol. We can buy the schematics for the shish kebab from him, though we likely already got this from Vance if we did the Blood Ties quest, which I covered in a video that you can watch here. And sadly, his ammo selection is horrible, with just a dozen or so rounds of low-level ammunition. However, after investing... It's my pleasure to offer hot death in a variety of exciting flavors. Take your pick. He has over a thousand caps, and take a look at that weapon selection. Flamers, miniguns, missile launchers, pulse grenades and mines, rippers, and sniper rifles. But best of all, his ammo selection now is one of the best in the game dozens or even hundreds of rounds of almost every known ammunition, including missiles, energy cells, and microfusion cells. Can you repair something for me, Lucky? I'll see if I can't take a whack at it. Before investing, his repair skill is only 15, but after investing, it's a respectable 70. Thanks, Lucky. Keep your skills sharp and your eyes peeled, all right? And finally, we can track down Doc Hoff. My investor arrives at last. This line of work doesn't allow for much sentiment, but how could I not offer you some material token of my thanks? In that case here, the gift of health. Rarely given in this day and age, but all too often taken. And he gives us seven stim packs. Tell me about your trade caravan, Doc Hoff. I provide food, drinks, and discreet chemicals to discerning customers around the wasteland. I help ease the suffering of my fellow man. For a prize. I don't have a home office exactly, but I organize much of my trade with Ernest Rowe in Canterbury Commons. Show me what you've got. Let's see what the good doctor has in his magic bag, shall we? And before we invest, we see a similar story. Around 300 caps to barter with, and a small selection of food and chems. Though we do find the schematics for the Nuka Grenade. But we already got this if we completed the Nuka-Cola challenge. Though the more blueprints we get, the more grenades we can make using the same amount of materials. But after investing, we see that he has over a thousand caps to barter with, more rare foodstuffs like Meyerlurk cakes, and a much greater selection of chems. Can you repair something for me? Let's take a look and see. And after investing, his repair skill jumps up to 65. See you next time you need that special little something. Improving the repair skill for these merchants is really essential if we use one-of-a-kind weapons like the Gauss Rifle and rare armor like the T-51 Power Armor that otherwise can't be repaired. And with that, we turned Canterbury Commons into a center of commerce in the Capital Wasteland. But the residents still have a problem. In our next episode, we'll track down both the Mechanist and the Antagonizer and decide exactly what we should do with them. I publish many new videos every single week on this channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs you can't get anywhere else. My design 
sides come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. My designs come on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. I'm becoming more active on Twitter. I use Twitter to respond to viewers and to make channel announcements like if I need to skip a day or if I'll be publishing a video late. So if you're active on Twitter, I encourage you to follow me at Oxhorn. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the conclusion of The Superhero's Gambit.